Here. I'm, uh, I don't really have a plan at this, at this very moment. I'm going to go wherever the Spirit leads me. Uh, I don't really know where that's going to be at, but, uh, I was talking about, uh, false idols. And, uh, you know, I don't really think it's what you listen to or, um, uh, who you listen to or anything like that. Um, it's what kind of pedestal you hold them on. Uh, you know, if you if you consider them uh, an equal, you know, just somebody that can sing real good or, you know, somebody that can act and, you know, you're happy for them uh, that they're doing good and and you wish that, you know, maybe they would find uh, Yeshua, that they would pray to him, uh, seek I am, uh, and maybe put that message out there uh, that, you know, so you're concerned for them. Uh, as long as you don't hold them up on that pedestal, uh, especially ones that are not fellow brothers and sisters that, uh, you know, where you hold them, uh, you know, at a level of godlike. Um, because we can't do that. Uh, they're in this beast system, um, they really can't help it, but, uh, I mean, I mean, I guess they could help it, but they've been in it so long now, uh, you know, what us Christians, uh-oh, I said it, believers are starting to, uh, notice is there signs in everything they do? Um, you know, they do uh, hand signals. Uh, they put their fingers over their eyes, do all kinds of different things. Uh, there's rituals they do, I'm sure, uh, so they can uh, try to um, get some type of leverage on them. You know, and it's, and it's a shame they have to do things like that uh, to be able to succeed. But uh, in this day time, the Antichrist spirit is running wild. And I mean, it's completely running wild on us. Uh, people don't realize that it's basically took over. I mean, uh, it's nobody's fault, really, uh, except for Christians, really, the believers. We haven't been going out there and pushing the gospel. We ain't been teaching our children. We haven't been doing anything. We've been letting our grandparents raise our children and I don't know what happened with them. Most of them uh, went to church, some of them still do, but the ones that do raise their kids, they let their phone raise them. The school and their telephone and computer and game system. That's what raises their children now. They don't know nothing about God. They really don't know much about uh, history. Just enough to get by. Most of them don't even know who Hitler is. Uh, but, you know, there's nobody to blame but us. Uh, the ones that should have been out there fellowshipping, uh, the ones that should have been out there uh, making disciples, uh, they should have been, you know, sowing good seed to bring forth beautiful fruit unto the church and, you know, unto the, uh, the faithful servants. And there's many of us. Uh, there's a lot of us that uh, pray daily uh, more than once, uh, especially before we eat, uh, when, when I, whenever I wake, I pray. Uh, I always pray before I go to bed, uh, and sometimes if, I, if I'm fasting, I'll uh, say a prayer every uh, three minutes. I'll uh, pray for somebody every three minutes, but anyways. Um, I want to talk about evolution for a minute. That's the biggest sham ever. Uh, when Darwin was on his deathbed, he uh, admitted that he made some of it up, and he actually uh, cried out. Now, I don't know if he made it to heaven or not, but uh, he admitted that it wasn't the truth. And it's obvious, if you look into, uh, you know, evolution, it's pretty much a joke. Uh, yeah, some fish crawled up on the uh, sand and uh, done all this and that. Yeah, lost me. <laughs> Spit that out. All right. But anyways, uh, anyway. You know, Adam and Eve, uh, they ate from the tree of good and bad. Uh, the serpent tricked them, and, uh, you know, they were sent out. But, you know, anyways, we had already been given dominion over the earth and all of its inhabitants. Uh, all we had to do, even after we had done that, is keep the faith, pray, put in good works, and... Uh, hope that you ascended to heaven but back then it was a little harder because Yeshua hadn't showed up yet uh, I am going to say that uh, the sons of God did come down 
which is the fallen or uh, you know angels they came down from heaven and they uh, laid with women and they made uh, they made hybrids or uh, I don't know what you want to call them uh, I don't know exactly what you call them I can't remember but uh, they uh, most of them were abominations they were uh, flesh hungry uh, they were just violent so uh, Along with that, and, you know, in the days of Noah, people were not, uh, they weren't living like, you know, godly ways at all. They, uh, they were just living fleshly lives, and they weren't, uh, looking after God at all. So finally, uh, you know, he sent the flood. The flood came. And after the flood, you know, Noah and his family, <laughs> they finally got off with all the, uh, with all the animals. And, uh, you know, they went around and re-inhabited the earth, which is a beautiful story. Uh, but what I was going to get at is they now have proof, now I don't have it right here in front of me, I should have got it, that uh, there was a point, and I even know around what time period, where mankind ceased to be. But, there was a few people, and this could even be Adam and Eve, who knows, but it's somebody that just popped up, and all everything flourishes from there now this could be Noah, or it could be adam and eve i don't know i hadn't checked into it a whole lot but some people say it's adam and eve uh anyways i hadn't checked into it a whole whole lot uh i want to talk about another thing nowadays this goes back to false idols uh we're glorifying the creation more than we're glor uh, glorifying the creator what's going on here you should always glorify the one who made you with his hands from the clay of the earth he molded you and he made you in his likeness and made you unique for everyone's unique they're their own person they are individuals but what I must say is that no matter what, we have to start worshiping the Creator again. For the Redeemer is the breaker of chains. He will free us. He will free us from our flesh and our flesh-born sin. For we are sinful in nature in our flesh. And you can only defeat that through the Spirit. If not, you will succumb. You will always succumb. You will succumb to fleshly desires. You will do things that if you had the spirit on your side and you had a little bit of foundation behind you you wouldn't even think of them things but nowadays we've been so brainwashed by the TVs that uh, we all think that uh, we should be watching catfish this evening uh, we should probably uh, you know watch uh, the the dead whatever this one's called now can't remember the name of it it changed uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. Or either Fear of the Walking Dead. You let me know. Anyways, Mandela Effect. I don't see that many anymore because I don't watch TV at all, folks. I don't watch TV. I don't watch YouTube. I listen to some music. And I'm trying to work on that to where I only listen to, like, uh, Christian music because I don't want to be a hypocrite, y'all. I'm trying to walk this walk, talk this talk, and do as I say and say as I do. And I want to glorify Yeshua. I want to glorify Him. I want to set an example in front of my family, in front of my friends, in front of anybody that will see me or anybody that will listen. That the time is at hand. We need to be in the scripture. We need to be studying. We need to be praying. We need to be preparing. For we know that they're going to come for us. And they're not going to be nice about it. And if we won't take that mark, we can't even eat. Unless, unless there's enough of us standing up and saying no. We will not take that mark. I don't care what you call it. I can look at you and see that you're demon-filled. That Antichrist spirit has filled you. 
you got that anti-God spirit. Now, I think that mark's going to come before this man comes into power and takes everything over. But we're close. We're years away. We're not decades. We're years. So, this man's coming into power. I don't know what he'll call himself. But he'll come in and he'll be a charismatic leader. He will be somebody that everybody loves. He will perform miracles. He will heal people. He will. He will probably prophesy. He's supposed to bring lightning out of the sky. And he's supposed to raise from the dead. And he will also shoot himself as God. He will. And in them days, people will start fainting from fear. They will be so scared that they will faint. Now, we will be weak in this period. We will need one another. But just remember, where we are weak, He is strong. Where we need protection, His hand of protection will lay down on us, brothers and sisters. He will take care of us, for we are His children. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And if you have called upon His name, and you have asked for forgiveness, and you have meant it in your heart, then you are sealed and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. You ain't got to worry about these devils. You got to worry about these demons. These spirits, these evil spirits, Jezebel, Antichrist, whatever you want to call them. They're all the same thing. You ain't scared of them because you are protected. You are protected and you do not have to even worry about it. All I know is that if you resist the devil, he will flee from you. You are not to fear the devil. You are not to fear demons. That's where they get their power from. You rebuke them in the name of Yeshua. Say, in the name of Yeshua, salvation and the word of God. This spirit and this spirit prophesies that you be gone. You will not stay. Yeshua has sent His Spirit to take you about or to take you down. It does not matter. You have to believe it in your heart. You have to believe everything. You have to believe that if there's a Spirit after you, that the Spirit or the Holy Spirit, somebody, one of them, your guardian angel, whoever, they will come and they will help you. you got to believe it. If you do not believe it, then it's, it's pointless. And if you're not building a foundation right now, if you're not building a foundation right now, and when I say building a foundation, I mean reading your Bible, uh, giving thanks whenever you're eating, uh, let's see, just doing things with your kids, talking about God a lot. Uh, you know, just there's only so much you can do. You have to. You have to be merciful, charitable, and loving. Now, I was always good at giving people lip service. Yeah, I help you. Oh yeah, yeah, I want to help. And I did want to help. But when things would get hard, or I couldn't understand how to do something, I would get upset. And I wouldn't say anything, but I would think things. Like, damn, you know, why did I do this? Can't believe I did this. I shouldn't have done it. I knew I couldn't do it, but I thought I could do it. That's some spirits getting in your head. Those spirits get in your head. They make you doubt yourself. They make you doubt what the Holy Spirit, what Yeshua, what I am, what, what they can do. They created us. They created everything that you see. I am did. Took him seven days. On the seventh day, he took rest. Now, this is a lot of things to create. And he just done it, and he took rest. Can you pick me up? Hold on, buddy. I'm doing video. But the point is, the spirit is being poured out right now, and there are demons everywhere. They messed me up a minute ago. They got in my head. You'll and you'll see where they messed me up. I don't know exactly even what to say because they got in my head. I'm being attacked spiritually 24/7, 24, 24 hours a day. I'm in spiritual warfare, and I pray. I pray a lot. I read my Bible a lot. I put in works with my family. 
I'm trying to do everything to please God. I don't know, you know, that I'm even going to make it into heaven, folks. But what does matter is what you do here. What does matter is what kind of legacy you leave behind. What does matter is if you leave a record of what you stand for and who you believe in. John chapter 1. There are three that bear record in heaven. Hush. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Let me read that one more time. There are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, and the water, <coughs> and the blood. And these <coughs> three are one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. I'm going to read one more. This is 1 Thessalonians 17. The last one was John 1. Or, yeah, 1 John 7. This is 1 Thessalonians 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the, of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. If you were, if you were a faithful person and you asked for forgiveness and you know stayed in good standings with God, and you died, and I know a lot of people like that. Uh, this piece of scripture right here proves that uh, you will meet Him in the cloud when He's coming down. To exact judgment on everybody. He'll meet y'all in the clouds. And uh, I don't know if you go up or you go down. Maybe you go ahead and get your upgrade and come on downtown with us. Who knows? That'd be cool. But just know that uh, if you know somebody that was religious and they died, you know, as long as they stayed uh, clean, in other words, they prayed, they will go to heaven. Uh, but there is a waiting period. I don't know how that works or how they uh, they feel it or, or what. But... Uh, we're at the very, very end, folks, so I don't think they have to wait too long, you know what I mean? Uh, so anyways, um, I'm going to read a little bit more scripture here, because no one knows the day or the hour. See, that's the thing. People are always uh, date setting, setting dates, talking about, you know, they know this, they know that, but they don't know nothing. And scripture will tell you that nobody knows when he's going to return. Nobody knows when the rapture is. Okay. This is Matthew 24, 36. No one knows the day or hour. But concerning the day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. 2 Peter 3.10 But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with the fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. So what's going to happen right there, folks, is when he comes back, the heaven will pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with the fervent heat. The earth also, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So that's pretty cool. When he comes back, uh, there goes the uh, heaven, and they'll go ahead and build a new one. So I just want to say that uh, the end is not folks. Uh, separation is at hand. Uh, the strong delusion is now. Separation of the wheat and tear. I don't know when it's going to be, but I want to be a wheat. I'm going to pray every day. If I do wrong, I pray more. Uh, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. I'm going to try to lead my family in the direction of salvation. For salvation is at hand. If the end is nigh, 
then we're close to salvation. We're close to that old upgrade. I want to upgrade. I want that old eternal life, that eternal being that I'll become. I don't care if I stay at this old being right here. I really don't. If I get to meet him again, I'll stay just like this right here. As long as I can live forever with him. I don't care how I feel. I feel good around him, guarantee that. Anyways, folks, I'm coming from somebody that's been in the presence, at least in the spirit of his coming, uh, Yeshua is the real deal. He is love. Uh, he's, uh, he's everything you'll ever want. Uh, when you feel like that you, uh, there's nothing that can help you, nothing that can fill that void, uh, nobody that can understand you know, no one can hear, and if they do hear, they don't listen. You feel that way? Call on His name. Make yourself known to Him, and He will make Himself known to you. I guarantee it. That is a promise. Salvation is at hand. He is pouring out His Spirit right now. He is doing something that He has never done. He's doing that to all flesh. It's up to these people to accept Him. Now, I'm not asking everybody to become saints overnight or anything like that. What I'm asking is you receive His Spirit. If something ever happened to any of y'all, you'd want to go to heaven, right? I'm sure there's somebody you'd like to see there one day. And you know they're going or they're already there. So if that's the only way that you can think to uh, get you to pray, pray like that. A little bit of prayer leads to a lot of things. It'll, uh, It'll bring the Spirit towards you, and the Spirit will uh, teach you things. Uh, it'll show you many things, but you have to be observant. Uh, you know, you could be talking to God, and, you know, uh, a fly fly by, or fly at your head. You know, and just listen. Just listen. Uh, listen and have faith. Have faith that what you're asking, you're going to get an answer to, you know. And you will. You will. Uh, he's a loving God. Uh, He's, uh, he's everything you'll ever need. Everything. He's everything I've ever needed and more. Or, and more. Uh, you know, I probably could be uh, married and happily married with kids and all that, but uh, and that would be uh, a plus probably. But, you know, as for the number one in my life, God. He's my number one. I uh, hope he knows that. I tell him all the time I love him. Um, so, other than that, other than, the, you know, the woman, I have a daughter, but she don't live with me, but anyways. If I had a, you know, family together living with me that I could really put more works in other than uh, having to do it, you know, through family, other family members, which is fine. It's working out great like that. Uh, they're actually reading the Bible one. They're not reading the Bible, but they're uh, they're asking to pray uh, for the now, which is you know a big deal. I think so, anyways. But anyway, y'all have a great day. Uh, just remember, uh, the strong delusion is now. If you see something that's changed, uh, don't let people tell you that it hadn't changed. Uh, trust your memories. Uh, what you remember is correct. Uh, a lot of people remember these things wrong, and I believe they're under the strong delusion. They have not broke out of the, we can call it the matrix, but it's not a matrix. Uh, but anyways, uh, they haven't they haven't woke up yet. So, you know, they don't see the changes, but I have a feeling that there's coming a day, uh, since everything in the darkness seems to be coming to the light, that uh, that they're gonna that they're gonna come out and say what well, we've been waiting for them to say this whole time. But anyways, I love you guys. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, remember, owe no man anything but to love one another. He who hath loved another hath fulfilled the law. Remember that. Also remember, be in the world, not of the world. Don't let this world take hold of you and tell you what you need to do. You just be there. You be there. You're the one. You're the one experiencing it. It's not experiencing you and telling you that you got to pick up the phone right now because it's beeping. Uh, you got to keep playing this game because you got this next level. And you're trying to get the sky. 
You, gotta, you lost that guy in front of you because he's going too slow and you're in a hurry. You understand? Let's be in this place. This place is a test. We are here for a short time. This is just a small part of our life. And we are being tested the whole time. We must keep the faith we must also pray, and we must remember that this is a test. It is. Um, and when I say it's a test, I mean uh, he sees all. You know, he's watching us, so it is a test. Uh, so try to, uh, just try to remember these things. I hope I'm not uh, driving y'all nuts with all this, but uh, I just have to say that uh, the time's at hand. People uh, are not really... Uh, talking too much about it but you know we had the eclipse on july the 27th 2018 which is in the bible blood moon january 2021 2019 maybe that's the one's in the bible anyways damascus ruinous heap it's been that way for a long time lovers of self boisterous they are denying the power therein they have a form of godliness they deny the power therein uh there's a lot of them. We call them New Agers. People that believe they are God. I'm no God. My name is Brandon Hollis here. And I am a man. I am a man. I am. Anyways. The constellations. Uh, there's going to be a prophecy uh, fulfilled, I think, in 2020. Uh, with the woman and all that. Is, I don't know a lot about that one. And then we're going to have some more eclipses, uh, which is awesome. Uh... Saudi Arabia had some weird precipitation and uh, followed by a locust type insect. It may have been like a, a grasshopper. Uh, this was on, this is in, da, 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 da. I don't have a date on that one. But, uh, you know, the point is, is, oh yeah, we had a seismic event that the whole earth shook and no one felt it on November 11, 2018. A seismic event. In other words, an earthquake. A big earthquake. The point is, folks, there is things happening everywhere. And no one is even talking about it. These are all prophecies. The time is at hand. And if separation ain't happened, it's happened soon. It's happening real soon. Now you want to be a wheat. And if you don't feel you can do right, ask for forgiveness, pray, and just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Read a little scripture here and there, and it'll work its way into your life. You'll find out that you can become a new creature. Especially right now, because his spirit is everywhere. You can grab a hold of that spirit. You can use it and become a new being. And become more like him and become a better you. And you'll find joy. For he is joy and happiness. Even though it may be a time of sorrows, through him, you'll always find happiness. For his love, I've felt it. Most awesome feeling I ever felt. Anyways, I love you folks. God bless. I'm going to do a couple more videos. Probably two more of these. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to call them. Uh, these are just chats about uh, about God. Brandon Hall's here. Have a good day. God bless. Trust your memories.